Hi, and welcome back to The Secret Life of Parkinson's. I'm Jessica Krauser. And I'm Brian Baker. And I'm Melissa Carlson. Oh, yay. <laughs> Melissa's here. Yay. Yay. So you know what we're going to talk about? Squats. <laughs> well, we could talk about squats specifically, but we were going to just talk about all exercises. Oh. All exercise. Yes. Your favorite topic. Yeah. I love exercise. Mm-hmm. So anybody who's listening, if you don't like exercising, like most of us, sorry, you want to no, but you want to listen to this episode because Melissa is going to talk about just the variety of exercises you can do. You have to mm-hmm. do what's best for you. Mm-hmm. Do what you like to do, and hopefully find some joy in it. So we are full of joy. Yes. Yeah. We are not joyless. Exercise we were. exercise brings joy. Sometimes. So <laughs> no, it really does. It does it help. Does. It helps mm-hmm. a ton. Um so Melissa, you have been doing fitness for how many years? Well, since I'm twenty-nine. No. Um total for about really seriously professionally i should say like 15. and you've been focused on parkinson's exercising for for the past eight so i know you do a ton of your own research and reading and going to classes and finding people all over the u.s Mm -hmm. to learn from what what is like what do you hear mostly from those types of either groups or those classes like what's important when it relates to Parkinson's for exercise? Well, the research has definitely evolved. Um, since I first started this back in, you know, eight years ago, it was um, just coming out more about the intensity and the frequency of exercise. So, and this is one of the reasons why I started um, PD Next Steps, because when I was teaching <clears throat> specifically for our hospital system, it was, a very, I started on a very basic level, so it was mm-hmm. in a chair. And then I moved up and started teaching an intermediate level. So it was a little bit of standing, a little bit of chair. And then the advanced level, I just kept, I, I had something in the back of my head, like we are we are under challenging this group. Like mm-hmm. they're so much more capable of what we're you know, providing for them. So um, I was fortunate enough to be able to start my own thing um, with the help of our hospital system and um, kind of take a leap of faith. So just kind of pushing that intensity a little bit more. And then it was like, oh, this actually makes a difference. Mm-hmm. And oh, they're actually improving their quality of life and stuff. So um, and now, like even the Parkinson's Foundation just in 2021 uh, released their guidelines of at least 150 minutes of moderate to um, vigorous exercise with two to three days of strength training and then balance and multitasking and all of that stuff. So. Um, All the stuff you already knew. Oh, well, oh. I mean, <laughs> but you and you build mm. upon like, like what you do based on conversations and meetings mm-hmm. that you've had with. I know there's a, somebody in California, right? That yes. has a gym. So like, shout out to Claire Rogue. Oh, Rogue, that's yeah. right. So there are other groups like mm-hmm. yours, right? Mm-hmm. That do this high intensity, right? Um, is it? Like, what should people people be looking for when they do look into a gym, or what should they focus on? Well, and when I have a conversation with someone, I'll ask them what they've been doing, what their history is with exercise, if they enjoy it, what do they enjoy? And it's it, it comes down to find something you enjoy doing, and mm-hmm. you're going to do it. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're going to a boxing class, but you really don't like it, well, what are the chances of you continuing to box, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you're just going to be like, oh, I've got to go boxing class but if you find like a boxing class that you love and it's great and you know you you get your heart rate up and stuff then great you're going to continue to box same thing if like people are come to me and they're like well i enjoy walking well that's great don't stop walking Mm -hmm. but are you getting your heart rate up can you hold a conversation with someone when you're walking if the answer is no then that's probably not the best thing you should be doing for Mm -hmm. people living with parkinson's now I will also tell people like more is always better. So Mm. don't give up your walking, have your walks, but also remember that you need to get your heart rate up at least 150 minutes. I actually like to tell people, um, let's push it a little bit and let's do 175 Mm. because, you know, everybody's temperature is a little bit different on, oh, I think I'm breathless. Oh, maybe I'm not breathless or... Mm -hmm. 
Um, but if you can hold a conversation with someone, you're probably not breathless. Like five or six words, if you can gut those out, okay, we're, you know, we're talking like more where you need to be. But if they don't have a Parkinson's specific gym, mm-hmm. um, is going to any gym still beneficial or mm-hmm. are there things that because we have Parkinson's, there are certain things we should focus on that right. other gyms don't have? Exactly. And that's, I mean, it's kind of a double-edged sword. So if you don't have access to a Parkinson's gym, um, you know, get, again, working, if you feel comfortable, that's the problem too, is like a lot of people don't feel comfortable going to a gym if right, they have yeah. a tremor or, you know, a drop foot or freezing whatever. Yeah, freezing of gait or something. And so that's going to make that person less likely to want to go to that gym. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the best thing about our, our gym is, you walk in and everybody gets it, you know, no matter what kind of day you're Mm -hmm. having, everybody understands. So I was asking just to, just to make sure, like if they don't have a Parkinson's gym, if they still go, cause I was going to, um, I still went to another gym, uh, for a little bit when I was first diagnosed. And I think I was like going back and forth, like Mm -hmm. doing different, I could, cause their exercises I could do like or classes were early in the morning because I was still working. Oh, time. right, right. And so I can only see you on Saturday because mm-hmm. your class was at nine. And so I was doing that. Mm-hmm. And then um, when I went back for another follow up, Dr. Malone was like, are you working on Parkinson's specific mm-hmm. exercises? And I was like, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm like once a week. And she's like, you might want to, you know, consider that just because right. there are things that they'll work on differently than right. just a normal exercise class that I was taking. Right. I mean, I found that I was in the gym quite a bit before I have Parkinson's and then after I got diagnosed, just the exercise, the exercise totally changed. Right. Yeah. Because I'm working on more range of motion. Right. Yeah. So I those, can, ex- yeah. like what you always talk about in class, the extensor muscles. So getting out wide and that Parkinson's being able to sure. look over your shoulder when you're driving. Right. Those, the rotation mm, and yeah. yeah. And if people don't have a Parkinson's gym and if they don't want to go to their mm-hmm. local gym, what options are out there? Um, well, we have a home workout series mm-hmm. on our website, and we have, as of yesterday, now we have 64 videos that are um, on demand. We have ones that are, we call them quickies, that are 20 minutes if you're in a hurry, 20 minutes or less. We have strength training. We have um, high intensity, low impact. We have knee friendly. Um, we have a lot of balance ones, um, so you can kind of pick and choose. It's um, you just sign on, and we do a thirty-day free trial. So anyone can are they do, are they able to interact with you at all, like through email or face to, or Zoom or like that, with questions or concerns? Oh, or? The, yeah, the email because once they get signed up. Once you go on the pdnextsteps.com, the um, we get a link, and it'll say. Um, you know, it'll say the name and the email, and then I correspond with everyone okay. directly. So, and then we touch base with them after the 30 days is up and see if they want to continue on. So, oh, so nice. do you know of um, any other type of exercises that are also available virtually if people wanted, like, dance mm-hmm. or... I don't know, people I feel like have done Tai Chi or yoga, specific to Parkinson's. Right. There are Tai Chi ones out on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know of any off the top of my head. Um, there's actually a lot on YouTube, and I know a lot of people with Parkinson's deal with sciatica pain, and there's some really great <laughs> um, YouTube videos out there on that. Um, but there are, if you just go on and Google, you know, exercises for Parkinson's, mm-hmm. you know, you can pretty much find. It's just a matter of, like, how much you want to push yourself and what you're looking for, you know, just keeping in mind that getting the heart rate up working on strength training. Um, And I think that's one of the hugest misconceptions is no matter what, I mean, as we age, we have to to fight sarcopenia, which is that age-related muscle loss. Mm -hmm. And with Parkinson's, it tends to be a little bit, I don't want to like not progress, but like a little bit more advanced. advanced, Thank Mm -hmm. you. Um, So fighting that plus lean muscle mass is so much better if god forbid you would have a fall Mm. or you know just having that leg strength and upper body strength um like we had the example with one of our um, people in class that um, was recovering from surgery and was Mm. out on a walk and hadn't been exercising or doing any upper body and he couldn't push himself up off the ground Mm. so that was like oh my gosh this really does make a big difference so 
um, being able to use your body and um, get yourself up off the floor is really one of those other things. Super important. So if you had Chest. to, I know squats are going to be like a big thing for you, but so if, if you talk about getting your heart rate up, but then also the strength training, mm -hmm. um, you know, you just obviously refer to like muscle, like arm strength, but mm -hmm. like what are the core areas and why should people focus on that part of their body? So legs with squats because you use, I mean, we did a whole podcast on that. You use um, your why legs. Why so many squats? Why, Jesse, why so many squats? Um, but just, uh, just to rehash it, um, we use our legs to help us get off the toilet, get out of a car, get off the floor, get out of bed. So um, having that, um, and plus when you squat, you're using core strength too. Mm -hmm. And core is everything. If you have a good, strong center, um, you'll be able to withstand a fall. Um, it will stop you from falling. Um, like we always say in class too, lunges. Lunges are, you know, you, you look at the um, top priorities and I would say squats and then lunges right next to it because lunges are fall prevention. If you lose your balance, you step out. You step out. But if you don't have that, um, if you don't have that movement pattern established, mm -hmm. you know, you're more likely to. What is that? You fall. You fall. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that. Um, and then, so push-ups too. We do a lot of push-ups because of upper body strength. If you can push yourself up off the floor. Mm -hmm. um, and then just shoulders. You know, Dr. Patel has shared with us before on frozen shoulder, how he sees so many people that come in that, and especially, you know, more likely they're Parkinson's side if they're not, because they're not swinging their arm. Mm -hmm. So they're, you get... <laughs> <laughs> Why is everybody moving? Because now I'm realizing that they're yeah. not moving. It. Yeah. So if you don't move, I mean, motion is lotion. So if you're not moving that arm, it's going to become stiff. And then people continue to not move it. And then they end up in with a shoulder replacement. And that's a whole other thing we don't want to have to deal with. So, yeah, move those arms. So one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that I really like about um Parkinson's exercises. Oh, the, 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 yeah, something you liked about Parkinson's. Something I like about Parkinson's. <laughs> you like something I like about Parkinson's. That I get to meet everybody here. Yes. Um, but I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get to say what I wanted to say. Um, the one thing that I like about it is that you teach us, I would say, what people would probably think of as the basics. Mm -hmm. Um but I've actually used it to help, you know, even like my parents and my in-laws for little things of like how to get up off the floor. Mm. Like people don't realize, right. like I can do it right now, but I'm still like young, I'm early in my diagnosis. But as you age, no matter if you have Parkinson's or not, you know, you have us and I wish I could, I wish I could do it for you guys, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> so, so, but if you lay down and you prop both your knees up, mm -hmm. And then you roll to your side, you roll to one side, and then you slowly get on all fours, and mm -hmm. then you put one leg up so you, you're flat-footed, mm -hmm. and then you push up on that knee. And just doing something like that, I've seen so many people in class, when they do it fast, and then they fall. They fall, they go and right back down. I know, and I then know. they do it slow. So it's just things like that that you get out of a Parkinson's right. class. Um, and I think they do that. I don't know, if does Rogue do things like that too, I'm sure? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, pro that's probably pretty normal for. Right. It's just about like, you know, you think about the activities of daily living. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I try to, when I think of, if I'm having like trouble formatting a class or something, I'll think, okay, what can we do? What can I, you know, what do, what do people do? Like empty the dishwasher, you know, mm -hmm. squat down, reach up high, put twist. stuff on, yeah, twist, get your seatbelt on, you know, all that kind of stuff. But to your point, getting up off the floor is huge. I mean, especially, you know, people playing with their grandkids or, you know, people come into me and they're like, I've not been on the floor in years. Mm -hmm. And, but why? Why? Mm -hmm. I mean, unless your doctor said, please never get on the floor. Yeah. I mean, the chances are I've dealt with it with my own mom, you know, it just, yeah. did you raise your hand like your doctor <laughs> said? <that? laughs> my doctor said I'm not, not allowed to be on the floor. What? Uh, Okay. okay. So she, anyway, she, she made the comment unless your doctor says you're oh, not to be on the floor. Right. I mean, I I have not in my <laughs> eight years ever someone said to me, "I'm my doctor said don't get on the floor." 
<laughs> but so you weird. know, the chances are it's like one out of four people over the age of 65 will have a fall every year. So mm -hmm. what's those numbers again? One, one out of four. Ouch. Yeah. That's not just Parkinson's. That's just, that's just yeah, a, the aging population. Yeah. So you got it. We have to be prepared. The other thing that I like too is um, how to catch yourself. Oh. The other thing I like too is that you wouldn't. Um, I didn't. I didn't think that this would be um, part of an exercise class, and it wasn't until I started coming to like the Mondays, Monday classes, that you know you have the different obstacles set up. But looking at um, colorful like stickers or mm. having this stick that has like words on it and you have to walk and read the words mm -hmm. or walk over hurdles and things like that. Mm -hmm. How is that something that's taught, I guess, or, or discussed that to incorporate that into your exercise and why? Well, the stepping over, because if you look at the research that says people with Parkinson's, the number one place they fall is bathrooms. And the second place... It might be tied with another one, but is curbs, going up and down mm -hmm. off curbs. So if you can establish that movement pattern, what I've noticed is we can get that first step over something, but it's that trailer leg that kind of mm -hmm. comes along for the ride. And that's where people end up in trouble because that's when they trip. Um, so stepping over those hurdles, you know, going up and over, again, it's sometimes it seems very elementary, like, oh my God, we're stepping over a hurdle. This is so boring. But it's reminding yourself to get both feet up and over and every class i don't care if we've done it you know six days in a row they're still i'm still reminding get both feet up and over and it's truly something anybody can do anywhere mm -hmm. you know grab a kleenex box do it at home yeah and then as far as the river rocks um i got those out of a pe like a children's um, physical education mm -hmm. magazine because it's walking on uneven surfaces yeah. so like we have a lot of people that travel and that they go across um you know over to europe where there's a lot of uneven yeah um places that they walk and they so many people come back and said i'm so glad we practiced that because i felt a lot more comfortable walking on uneven surfaces why do you give us that stick to read or look at colors or say colors because it distracts you so you have to think while you're doing something so if you're holding that stick and you're trying to step over then your brain's focused on two different things mm -hmm. so if you can establish that pattern of stepping over something even without that so the whole theory behind that is you're reading something you're doing um another motor activity right so i'm reading this i'm stepping over if i can do that with success then stepping over something should be easier about, mm. you know, and when you're out it's in the real world. Dual. It's the dual. Dual. Doable? Dual. Dual tasking. Dual ta multitasking. So when, you know, on certain class times when you say, why are we doing this? This is dumb. I would <laughs> never say, say that. Dumb? No, I don't ever say anything. That she's, it's Meg. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually interesting because it's not easy to do mm -hmm. for anybody regardless if you have parkinson's or not right. so i brought ben my 13 year old into class this morning and it was it was all just you know body strength right, and right. movement stuff like that but um there was one motion like he couldn't do and it was like because he had to think about it yeah and so when he you can see like I, I saw him stop and i think it was like seal jacks oh so yeah. you're just going it's out and clapping yeah. in but he's ne i don't know if he's not never done it or whatever but he kept like jumping out and then like clapping, clapping in. he's in. like wait and then he's like stop and i'm like just concentrate like go out and then and then he'd do it and then he like knew and he had it going and then i was like good job and he was still doing it and then he got flustered again and i'm like see like yeah even 13 years old like right athletic and athletic shape. athletic and shape kid. well like the supermans too that opposite you know mm -hmm. that dual that uh, um, yeah yeah Great. reciprocal movement pattern yeah. thank you yeah so maybe at the uh uh what no so this is a way for because we get people all the time asking about the community that you have built mm -hmm. and so this is a way for other people to maybe interact with that community because they can also zoom in yes live classes yes we have well, zoom right? every day so mm -hmm. you can pop in and chat chat with us say hello say hello maybe if it's your birthday we can do squats for oh, your birthday yes. That's be yeah great. that would suck yeah <laughs> we did that today yeah we had a birthday today yeah. it was fun Ooh. hopefully it's my young yeah. yeah it was someone pretty young yeah wasn't Ben, but no. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe even at the at the end of this episode, or you know, I, I'd I'd stop to do some research. We can look up 
all the different opportunities oh, yeah. that people have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so obviously PD Next Steps, they have the home workout series, but what are other things either, if it's for whatever reason in their area, if they mm-hmm. wanted to do that, or if there's other exercise types, like again, like if people like to dance, or, right. but is there anything virtual that they can virtual do? Virtual that they, they can do they anywhere, do it, yeah. um, From somewhere TikTok. else. TikTok, oh my God, we should start a TikTok mm-hmm. exercise. <laughs> TikTok, not the TikTok dancing is what I was like. Oh, oh, yeah, that would be something. That would be different. Yeah, I love it. Okay, okay. Well, thanks. thanks. Always a pleasure being here. I just so, love sitting it, across it, the I table know, from know, you. <laughs> looking at you just makes me so happy. <laughs> so, in our last thirty seconds, I'll leave you with this: whether you have a gym available to you at your home. Uh, in the area that you live in, or you can join something virtually, make sure that you always incorporate Parkinson-specific exercises. And to find those, I know you can go on to pdnextsteps.com for sure. Also, Parkinson's Foundation, I'm sure Michael J. Fox Foundation has stuff as well. There is information, there are exercises out there that everybody can do, so just do you do you, uh, listen to your doctor, and as always, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks. Thanks.